So in the first day of our class where we're talking about SEO, we need to set some ground rules. We've got various concepts to learn, and then we'll build on those ground rules. So go ahead and open up your web browser, any one you like. We've got all the popular ones. And we'll go over to google.com. It's one of the two big search engines we're going to optimize for. Let's go to google.com. They've been around a long time. Nowadays they're synonymous with search, but they're not the only search engine. And actually, their, their uh, market share is decreasing a bit. We'll talk about why and how that affects you in a little bit. But let's open up google.com, and here we have the, the very Spartan homepage. And uh, what we'll do first is we'll do this classic activity. Um, let's go ahead here and search for your name as you are commonly known. We're going to search for your name as you're commonly known, as your name is properly spelled, commonly known. So if, you're, if, if your full name is William Jefferson Clinton, you're going to search for yourself for Bill Clinton. Search for yourself the way you are commonly known or want to be known. Do a quick Google search for yourself. I get 25 million results. Various pictures, none of these are me. There's a call-out box on the side, it's not me. I was not born in 1935. There's various results. Number one result is Internet Movie Database for the actor, that's not me. Number two result is me. There's my LinkedIn profile. Number three is also me. That's my profile at RateMyProfessors.com. You can go there to Rate Instructors and find out um, about the different classes being offered. Let's say you're trying to take a math class and there are seven sessions of it, which is the one that you're going to take. Well, you can look it up here and look for the one where the instructor's not so mean. And so I've got a profile there. This is one of my websites. There's Facebook. I'm not that Facebook page, that's the generic Facebook account uh, search. There's Victor Campos Castillo, that's not me. What else? Video, that's not my stuff. Victor Campos Legal, that's not me. So out of those 10 results, it seems about four of them or so are me. Some of these results, of course, are, are not me. Um, and the point of this is to see what does Google know about this search term? This term here, Victor Campos. Now make a note of this result in my case, victorcampos.brandyourself.com. I'll make some notes here also. Brandyourself.com is a is one of many sites out there that are known as reputation management sites brand yourself there's one literally called reputation.com there's about.me um, a few more but reputation management sites can range between free and paid, and oftentimes they start off free with some good features, the better features you pay for. The purpose of these sites is there are 10 slots on the first page of a search results page, Bing, Google, Yahoo, whatever. You just saw that several of those results are me. I'm taking up more of the slots than the actor who's been around since 1935, who's been an actor since the 70s. They have more of a presence in the world, but my results appear more than the other Victor. And the other ones about some lawyer and a doctor and all of that, I appear more than those other ones. So I've taken more of the slots of the front page. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and have a seat. So what the point of this kind of site is that this site will help you elevate the positive things about you and bury the negative things about you. Um, as you saw there, one of the results at the bottom that I'm getting for myself is my brand yourself profile. 
So the point of that is I want to get as many things of mine to show up as possible positive things compared to the competitors. And these reputation management sites are useful for that. We're not going to talk about them too much in this class really. I'm just bringing that up. It might be useful to you. For example, let's say you're the face of your company. You're a realtor. You are the literal face of your company. You want the best things to appear online when someone searches your name. Are they a good realtor? Let me type their name. Let me search. I see all of these positive results. I'll hire them. You don't know what results will appear of yours unless you do some searching and weeding and such. And these reputation management sites help you with that. This obviously wouldn't be that useful for me if I was working at Qualcomm, let's say. And I'm an employee in a big company, but I'm not exactly the face of the company. So I don't really need to worry too much about putting my presence online. So it doesn't matter for everyone, but I wanted to bring it up. I'm going to open another window. I'm going to leave the Google results. I'm going to open another window, and this time go to the address bing.com. Many of you raised your hands when, we, when I asked earlier if you've heard of Bing. If you haven't heard of Bing, it's a rival search engine. It's the second biggest one in the world. It's got about 20 or 22 percent market share or so, and it's increasing. Google is decreasing. Now, I'm not saying Bing is where we're going to take them. They could, but I'm not quite seeing that in the short term, even in the intermediate term, 20 percent to 60 percent. But Bing is a search engine, just like Google. It's got the search box right in the middle, but obviously it looks very different than, than, than Bing. It's got the uh, headlines and such um, down at the bottom. And uh, various sections and a picture of the day. Every day it changes. You see some sort of interesting picture every day, but the main core of it is still to search. Let's search on Bing the same way you just searched for yourself on Google. I'm going to start typing my name, just like I searched for it on Google. I'm going to see somewhat similar, somewhat different results. This has got 4 million results rather than 25 million. The number one result is the Internet Movie Database again of the actor. Number two is LinkedIn, but not my particular LinkedIn. This is top ten victors on LinkedIn. Pictures, the call-out box on the side for the actor again. The third result is my LinkedIn profile. So I appeared in third place on Bing. I appeared in second place on Google. Slightly different on Bing, the result here is that it also shows my job title and my connections. Same information presented a little bit different on Bing. Facebook results of all victors. The celebrity on TV Guide. That's not me. Rotten Tomatoes. That's not me. The 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 nurse practitioner. That's not me. I don't have. I'm not a nurse practitioner. I don't have one star. The white pages. So the same. So the search engine. Both of them search the same internet the same websites of the world. Bing has its own algorithm. Google has its own algorithm. An algorithm is just a computer program to help you accomplish something. Google has an algorithm that feels these are the best results. There are 4 million results that we think are most important to you. Google says we think there are 25 million results that are better for you. And again, as I said, most people nowadays are assuming the first page of result, maybe the second page of results, is the best. So thanks Google for 25 million results, I'm never going to see even 100 of them. Thanks Bing for 4 million results, I'm never even going to see you know 20 of them. This is SEO, getting on the first page of results when someone searches on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo, on ask.com, whatever. They're all searching the same web, but they have their own algorithm. How many of you saw something on Google that you were not expecting? Raise your hand. You don't have to tell me what it is, but you see something you weren't expecting on Google? Did any of you see something on Bing that you weren't expecting? 
Did any of you see anything on Bing that you didn't see on Google? All right, so very small sample, of course. But we're seeing here why it's valuable to optimize our result, our websites, our online presence to both of the big search engines. Anyone remember back in the old days, the ancient days of the web, yahoo.com. That was the big search engine that had like 90% market share at one point in the 90s. When the web was much younger and there were less search, uh, less websites, Yahoo was the big search engine where someone would search and find results and get what they want. 90% like market share. Others came out and then chipped away little by little and then eventually Google came out around 1998, I think, 99 or so. Uh, Yahoo came out in 93 or so, 94 maybe. And so um, eventually Google came about and it took over and it reached a very high market share. It started from zero, of course, at some point and went up to itself 80% or more uh, market share. But then now it's decreasing. It's down to about 65%. Uh, market share. And Bing itself also started at 0% market share at some point, and it's been increasing. And we can look these values up exactly, but it's got about 20%, 22% market share. And you might say, well, I've never used Bing before. I don't use Bing. I don't like Bing. I don't know anyone that's ever used Bing. I don't care. 20% global traffic. That's a big thing to think about. And it's going to keep increasing. Google search comes from which company? Google. But they changed their name. Now they're called Alphabet. Not a lot of people know that, but Google, the parent company, is now Alphabet. For all intents and purposes, it's still Google. So Google runs Google search. Bing search. Who runs Bing search? Microsoft. So two big, huge companies, Google, Microsoft. Um, Microsoft also basically powers all of the computers you have in this room, Windows. If you go out and buy a brand new computer, and globally, Windows computers are still very dominant. They're like at 80% globally. If there's a computer in the world, 80% of the time, personal computer, it's a Windows computer, even though Macs have a lot of m mind share and uh, fame and such, uh, they still are outnumbered vastly by Windows computers. Windows computers are from Microsoft, Bing is from Microsoft, guess what? By default you're gonna have Bing search built into a brand new Windows computer. You can of course change it, and people do. People live and die by Google. People don't care, they just want to search. They want answers. They want a restaurant. They just type in search. They get a result. They don't pay attention. And so more Windows computers are sold than Mac computers, so more people have Bing by default. When the iPhone came out in 2007, Apple had a contract with Google to display search results through Google search. So when you would search on your iPhone, you would get Google results. Eventually that contract ran out, expired, and now Apple no longer has that search contract with Google. Guess who they have it with? Microsoft. Bing. They've got a contract with Microsoft to display Bing results on the iPhone, on the Mac, etc. Which of course you can change, and people do, but some people don't. They just search. They ask Siri, what's a good taco shop? They get results. The end. I go to the taco shop. And they're getting that traffic from Bing without knowing. So that's some of the reasons why it's increasing. My friend has a Prius. She's got a cool front panel on the dashboard. You, you touch it and get maps and such. And it has search. I tap search and it said powered by Bing. So her Prius has, a, has Bing search built in. Um, Yahoo, who has seen better days, they actually sort of subcontract out their search results to Google and Bing. So when you do a Yahoo search, it used to be Yahoo's algorithm figured out the best results. It wasn't quite working for them, so they got a contract with Bing, and then you would be seeing Bing results on Yahoo. 
recently, very recently, then Yahoo also added a contract with Google. So now you're seeing Google and Bing results on Yahoo. So that's why we'll be targeting both Google and Bing, because we're going to be reaching the biggest audience like that. So that's why we want to pay attention to both search engines, and, when, and we will see that whatever we do on one applies to the other. The thing is that internally their algorithm, their technique for determining the best results might differ. And in this class we'll learn about the techniques, we'll learn about where do you look up the latest techniques, what's new, what are the do's and don'ts. We can look all of that up. The search engines will tell us do's and don'ts of search optimization, but they won't tell us everything. There are trade secrets that they won't reveal so that the other guy doesn't steal those secrets. Let's go back to Google, and I'm going to do another search. This time, search for the name of your business. Search for it in the name, the name of your business, the way that your business is properly spelled out and such. Don't, don't get too complicated here. Just the name of your business, capital letters, spaces, whatever. But don't put a location or any other such advanced stuff. Just put the name of your business. Search that on Google and search that on Bing, the same way on both. Google says there are nearly 300,000 results, and the number one result is my home page. I win. I'm on the first page of Google results. Well, that's a trick question. That's a false result. Of course I'm number one here. I'm searching for the name of my company. And regular people are not going to be searching for the name of your company usually. They're going to be searching for something else. If they know the name of your company, they're going to find your company a lot easier. But if they don't know the name of my esoterically named company, they're going to search for different terms, which we'll get to that soon. The point of this result page is to show you in action SEO and SEM. What are you doing on your website? What are you doing outside of your website? What do the search engines know about you? They know a lot. Your company, that is. Number one is the company website. Last updated January 14th. The next result is our Facebook. We've got our Facebook page there. People hang out on Facebook all day long. We're on Facebook too to reach an audience. We have reviews on Yelp. Um, this is a big tangent, but I'll make a little note here for the moment. As I said, SEO techniques on your website, SEM techniques outside your website. One of the big aspects of SEM is, um, or are a big aspect of SEM is, um, review sites. You know, testimonial sites. User-generated content sites. These are all synonyms, basically. Review sites, testimonial sites, user-generated content sites, uh, specifically Yelp. Yelp is very important nowadays. Um, every sort of business or service, goods or service kind of um, company, um, short answer, needs a Yelp. Longer answer is more complex to talk about for individual cases but you need to have a presence on Yelp, is the short answer. Uh, because restaurants are on Yelp, hotels are on Yelp, web designers are on Yelp, lawyers, hairdressers, realtors, dog walkers, everyone's on Yelp. You may not have put yourself on Yelp, so then someone probably put you on Yelp. Either they had a great experience with your business, or had a negative experience with your business and ran off to Yelp, looked you up on Yelp, you're not on Yelp, let me create a Yelp right now and give you one star. And people can do that. 
uh, people do do that. So if you never created your Yelp account, possibly someone else did. So you want to look into that. You want to look into claiming your Yelp pr presence so that you can answer the negative comments. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, Yelp is one, Angie's List, these are these testimonial review sites, etc. Does anyone know of any other sorts of review sites? There's kudzu.com, TripAdvisor, Glassdoor.com. Not all of these sites apply to every kind of business. For example, um, Angie's List is often for like contractors and such. I want to add an addition to my house or redo the tile in my house. Uh, I can look them up on Angie's List. People give them reviews. Um, Kudzu is, uh, you know, related to Yelp. It has different nuances. Off the top of my head, I don't remember them, but there's different ones there. TripAdvisor is a little bit more focused on, for example, uh, restaurants, hotels, and such. If you're going to visit some other look, some other city in the in the country and such, uh, you might look them up on TripAdvisor. People will then, from a perspective of travelers, give reviews and such. Glassdoor is a bit more for tech companies, and then Yelp is everything. Just about every type of business. So if you're only focusing on what you're doing on your website, you're missing the other side of that coin, SEM. Part of that is review sites. So if you're not on a review site, get on there, ask for reviews. Every time you have a happy customer, say, don't forget to review us on Yelp. If you get bad customers that give you bad reviews, you need to deal with those and I'll talk about those later. But notice one of the results here on search is Yelp. It's that nice star rating that stands out, that gives the purpose, part of the purpose of these review sites is also to, to build trust and authority and entice people to click. That's one of the results. We've also got uh, an Android app there's the company LinkedIn, our Twitter, Alignable.com. I'm not sure what that is. That popped up by itself. So I need to research what is Alignable.com. One of our videos on YouTube is there. MapQuest to get over to the location. And then the last result is something that we are not. We are not Psycho Psychomedics Corporation Interactive Chart Analysis. So this page of thousands of results is to show you these are the various things that Google knows about us. This is to show you you should, you should be on more places online than just your website. If you want to learn about social media, Facebook and such, I teach a class on that. As I said, this Friday, the Friday these Fridays for this month, I'm teaching the, the social media class. We're covering Google Plus this week, Facebook next week, uh, Pinterest the week after that, and then YouTube and such eventually. So Google recognized that we had updated our website last on January 14th. That was a blog post we added. Something We wrote an article about something. Google saw it and sees that this site was updated recently. The search engines like a website that is updated on a regular basis, that it can pin a date on so that when someone searches, they get the most relevant, timely content. I teach a class on blogging next month, I think. I don't know what day and time, but I, I teach a class soon on blogging. And maybe one day you want to build an app for your business, I teach a class on app development. I'm going to compare the same uh, search query on, on Bing. It's also searching the same internet. It found, Bing found, half a million results instead of a quarter of a million. The, the results look a little bit different in that the number one result is advancedkiosks.com, but that's an ad. 
there is a nice little map of the location, address, phone number, great contact information. Bing is really helping drive traffic to our company because they're making it so easy here. Google didn't. Google showed in general PMD Interactive stuff, but not a very, very direct way for me to get contacted to get hired. Bing is also showing here deep links. These are links on our website deeper than the home page. It's showing the portfolio page to go directly to see our, our portfolio to see if, if we should be hired. The request a quote page to request a quote. So Bing here is helping us a lot. It's showing, it's showing those deep results. It's also showing a lot of the ancillary stuff, the Yelp reviews. Right on the page there, the Yelp reviews are, are really standing out, whereas on Bing, it says we're Yelp review, reviewed, but not the actual results. Our YouTube video, number of subscribers and views. Our Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, so more social media. Bing is showing more social media. MapQuest again, and then the other company, PMB, Psychometrics, whatever company. And so, this is the search to show you the importance of SEM. Any questions so far? Let's search the way people might more realistically search for my company. Let's go back to Google, and this time let's search for a keyword about your company. Don't get complex yet if you know a little bit about this. Don't get complex yet about a location or any such modifiers. I want to be found for uh, social media marketing. I want to search for social media marketing in both Google and Bing whatever your company is. One of the keywords about what you do or what you sell or what you're about, search a keyword like that. Again, don't put in San Diego or affordable or anything complex yet. We're gonna look, for, we're gonna look this up in a basic way first. Social media marketing in both search engines. Um, Google says there are 631 million results. Bing says there are 79 and a half million results. And Google, the number one result, pce.sandiego.edu, some sort of educational institution. So that's like learn social media marketing on your own. Number two result is, what is that, Gaia? GuyanConsultants.com. The, the first result of a company is GuyanConsultants.com. So great, they're at the top. They're the best results. True or false? If they're at the top, they're the best, aren't they? True or false? <clears throat> yes? It's an ad in my paper. Exactly the point. They're at the very top, which some people will just clearly think they're at the top, they're the best. But some of us that are perhaps a bit more savvy see that it's marked as an ad. And some of us skip the ads for various reasons. And so there is a huge demographic of people that are not savvy, don't know what that ad means, don't, don't know, and, and see that that's a possible result. Enhance online presence and sales. That's what I need, and I'll click. But for some amount of people, they will click and hire them and this ad worked. Or maybe they went over with bizarrevoice.com because it sounds for me best in class moderation and drive traffic. I like what they're saying there better than here even though they're higher, so I'll click on them. Some amount of people will not be savvy, will see these top results and will click. Other amount of people will skip the ads and look for a real result. Over on Bing, I also get ads, but they kind of make it a little bit harder to notice that some of them are ads. They're marked as ads, but they're not marked with a nice yellow color. You might not notice. Salesforce.com. 
speed, position, flexibility. Hmm, they're at the very top, number one, and we hire them. Have you noticed that the search engines don't give you numbers anymore? Remember when it used to be number one, two, three, four, five? They don't give numbers anymore. Uh, and then we've got Sprout Social and so forth. Now, have you noticed, very, very subtle also, Bing has results on a main column here and on a side column. Didn't Google used to have that too? Google used to have results on the side as well. They've taken that out. The search engines are constantly changing the rules. They're constantly changing the techniques. They're updating things on an ever, uh, ever, uh, you know, on a never-ending uh, quest to keep at bay the spammers and the hackers and and all of these uh, bad guys online. So. A bit, uh, Google has changed this. Bing might follow suit at some point. One search engine does something, then the other search engine looks at it and sees, well, we can do our version of it. And they're always in competition. And in and a few years ago, Google didn't care at all what Bing did. It had 80% market share. Now it's got 60% market share, and it is looking at what Bing is doing. And so you will see back and forth this joust between the two search engines. This kind of search of a keyword is not giving me very good results. I see all these ads, which I'm going to skip because I hate ads. And then I see entrepreneur.com. That is a magazine, an online magazine, about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and um, they're giving me advice on marketing strategy. I don't want advice. I want someone to do it for me. I have a business. I want someone to do it for me. So that's not a good result. 10 Laws of Social Media Marketing. Again, that's not what I need. An article on Wikipedia. I don't need that. What is social marketing from Search Engine Land? Another article. 20 social media marketing tips. Again, I'm getting a lot of results of how-tos or articles, videos and such, but I'm not quite finding act an actual company. Maybe this one, wordstream.com. Using social media for marketing can enable small businesses, your customers are interacting. I guess they're a company. I might have to click and find out. Comparing with Bing. Again, some ads, I'll skip those. The article there's the article on Wikipedia again, and it's number one. 16 tips, 10 best, uh, 10 best marketing consultants in San Diego. That might be helpful if I'm not getting a lot of good results, I might go look at some of these review sites to see what other people are saying. Oh, but this one maybe, ignitevisibility.com, social media company, San Diego. Okay, I am seeing finally a real company that did not pay for results on a results page, on a SERP, search engine results page. I didn't see any real company on Google, socialmediamarketing.com. The premier thought-leading agency for brands. If they're premier, why aren't they number one above <laughs> Ignite? So this kind of search that we did is the old kind of SEO, the old kind of search, a basic keyword search. This one doesn't work anymore. You are a needle in a haystack if you're trying to optimize your site for basic keywords. So I'm making notes here. Again, I'm going to make these available on the network folder later on. But old SEO, basic keyword optimization. This is not good anymore. You're a needle in a haystack. Hundreds of millions of results. You're not going to stand out trying to get found by the old basic keyword strategy. New SEO or modern SEO because it'll be new all the time, but modern SEO is long tail keyword optimization. Long tail keyword. You've used the web, you've searched websites, Google being whatever, for a few years, probably five years, maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years, 20 years. The web uh, is 
uh, 27 years old this year. Websites, the web is 27 years old. Now the internet is older. It's from the 60s. The internet is all the networks of the world. The web are specifically websites. You open up Safari, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, whatever. You visit a website, it's the web. It's been around since 1989. The internet has been around since the 60s. And so you've used the web for lots and lots of years, most likely. And you have seen, from personal experience, that you often don't get the best results when you search unless you are detailed. And that, in practice, is the long tail keyword strategy. So, basic keyword optimization is simple keywords people search for. Long tail is detailed keywords people search for. Detailed, specific, targeted. Um, this is the um, this is this is the uh, next generation of, uh, of of all of this. In that I'm not getting the results that that I'm expecting uh, by these basic keywords. So I would do something more like this. My company's not showing up here. I'm one in a million. So I would be searching for perhaps a person would be searching for affordable social media marketing companies in San Diego. I'm kind of searching more like that. I'm being more specific. You probably are also searching that way, being more specific, more detailed. So if you refine your search on both engines to be a little bit more detailed, on Bing I had, 20, I had 79 million results. This is whittled down to only 21 million now. On Google, I also had lots and lots and lots of results, uh, 631, this has got down to 624. Still a lot of results, but lots of ads, I'm going to skip those. But then now I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this local search, this map of my location. The search engines nowadays know our locations generally. And for a person, like personally for myself, I don't like that. I don't like that the search engines and websites know so much about me. But as a company, I love that. I want to know where people are around and where people are searching so I can target to them, so that I can stand out as that needle in a haystack, so I can stand out to people. So there's that love-hate relationship. There's the good and the bad of it. I personally don't want to get tracked and get found and all of that, but it's useful for us as a company. And so Google is giving me all of these results. I'm going to skip the ads. And I see a map and such. And then I see other results. I see, again, some review site. And then I see olamoana.com, San Diego Marketing. I see say, seoinc.com. I see mysmn.com. I see there's Ignite Visibility again. They're a little lower than before. Actually, they are finally showing up on a Google search. They were not showing up on the previous search. There's some Yelp results. Search engine, search engines payperclicks.com and selfimagemedia.com, etc. I'm getting real results now. TonyCorsini.com. Whereas the generic search, the basic search, I wasn't getting very many real results. I was getting um, ads, I was getting review sites, articles, news. Snippets, here I'm getting real results, getting specific. On Bing, I've got ads on the top and on the side. I've got a map also. Really nice to look at map here. Um, these companies stand out. Impromo.com, iExperts Media with reviews. Two places, actually. And then Yelp, there's Ignite Visibility again and then an article. My company still doesn't show up, but I'm showing you here that this is what we will be 
concentrating a, a lot in this class, the long tail keyword strategy, the way that people are searching more nowadays, that they're more specific, uh, because people get specific there and they also do things like this. What's a good Mexican restaurant nearby? I asked a natural language search query, which is just a fancy way of saying I asked it like a person. And it gave me results right here. La Fuente Mexican food, four stars, 105 reviews on Yelp one mile away, uh, Palomino's Mexican and seafood, four stars, 104 reviews one mile away, Lupe's tacos, 231 reviews, etc. I'm getting a lot of results that are local to me. I asked it nearby, I asked it in a natural way. It tapped into a search engine, in this case Bing. I've got a Windows phone, so it gave me Bing results. If I had an iPhone or a, you know, an Android phone, I, would, I could ask it the same thing. I can talk to my phone nowadays and ask it things in a natural way. And it gave me a bunch of local results. So I, I asked like a real kind of question, that's the long tail keyword strategy. Detail keywords people search for, natural language search. There's all of these buzzwords and such, but basically it's getting detailed, getting specific. That's what we're going to concentrate in this class. We're going to develop our keyword strategy. We're going to look at our, uh, at our company, our website, our online presence and such, and brainstorm and think about what are keywords that people would be searching for. Long tail keywords. Um, there's a lot of things to cover here and there, and, they, and things change, but it all comes back down to content. So this is the art and the science and the magic, because why do I rank well, but they don't, and trade secrets and we can do as much as we can and optimize as best as we can. But we're going to take a break in a moment and I want to leave you with one concept before the break. Optimize for people, not search engines. The search engines themselves tell you don't simply follow the rules mechanically and try to game the system by optimizing just for the search engines. And, and I know it's very counterintuitive and such. You can over-optimize. There is a tightrope, unfortunately, a balancing act. The search engines want you to do these things, but not too many of them, not too over the top, because they want you to get found by people, not the search engines. They don't want you to you know, robotically follow a formula. They want you to create content and do stuff online to actually get you found by people. Because the point of the search engine is to search, is to find results for people. So that's something to think about, and in practice we'll see how it applies. Any questions at this point? Let's take our first break. It's 1.50. We'll be back at 2 o'clock. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print the syllabus. And we'll be back at 2 o'clock.